Old Sneelock. Welcome to another episode of Old Sneelock's Workshop. Today I'm working on the AXA uh, tool post. I have been using a cobble up tea nut. This is one that I made to go into the compound and I used it to uh, hold a boring bar because it was the first actual tool that I made with a lathe. I needed to, to bore some holes and I wanted to thread a, a face plate, so I made up a boring bar mount, I made up a boring bar, and I made this T-nut. Works quite well with a boring bar. I, I used the bolts that I had, and I didn't have a milling machine, so I actually milled this with a drill press. Now I want to use the milling machine that I've set up on the, now I want to use my South Bend as a milling machine, and cut the T-nut for the AXA using that milling machine. But before I do that, I have to lay it out. That means I have to mark the block where I'm going to cut it, and I think I'm probably going to cut off some of it, either with a, an abrasive wheel or with a hacksaw. don't like a hacksaw, but it's only a shortcut, and really in the, in the land of uh, problems, this is a small one. So, my first thing to do is, is determine what size the T-slot is and draw up what the T-nut's going to look like. And I've done that. I've got a little drawing here with the, the dimensions on it. Uh, the new T-slot, the new T-nut's going to be 1.3 inches across this way. It's half inch thick and it is uh, 0.85 the top part of the T which is actually bigger than what this is uh, it's going to be 0.85 across the top of the T on the narrow section and I need to set uh, I need to have this edge 300 thousandths thick so that it'll fit into that T slot that way when I go to tighten it up it'll lock up and hold itself in that T slot and I might make it shorter I don't know, that would be an extra cut, probably not worth the trouble. Probably going to make it just the full width. This is the AXA block that came with the AXA uh, tool post. It's set up so that I could cut it to size to fit my lathe because it kind of matches all different kinds of lathes. They do sell a South Bend T-nut, uh, but I have a threaded block and I have a hacksaw and I have all the stuff to mark it out. It's just a matter of cutting it. So today's project is to cut this T-nut and then set it up in the lathe and use my milling machine apparatus to mill this to size. And really, I should have everything cut with a hacksaw pretty close to size and I'll just use the milling machine to square things up. If I'm careful, I can cut this almost to size and then maybe just file it down a little bit. We'll see if I can do it manually first because that's a better challenge. In these days of digital machines, CMMs that uh, can actually measure a block, if you just set it on the table and hit a button it'll go along and measure all the axes and tell you what size it is and actually make a print of the part that you put on the table. This is kind of old school but when I first started this was actually a pretty cool way to do things. Uh, you could do it manually. You could take your calipers and lay out the block and, and mark the lines on it. Mark it with dicum and mark the lines on it. This one's black oxided, so I'm just using that as the instead of putting dicum on it. Uh, and you would lay it out and then you'd take your straight edge and you'd cut it and or you you take your straight edge and your square and you'd lay out the lines and then mark it and cut it. Well, there's an easier way to do it. It's called using a height gauge. Now, this is by no means a surface plate. This is a stone tile that I got from a stone tile store. I went in and said, uh, could I buy a piece of stone? And they said, what size you need? And I told them about a foot square and they said, well here, just take one of these tiles. So they gave it to me for free, which can't beat the price. And it's flat. 
the same equipment that they use to make surface plates, they use to make these little tiles. Now, it's probably not within two tenths of a thou, like a tool room surface plate, but I'm making something for my workshop. If I got a surface plate, I'd probably have to pay a hundred bucks for it, and I'm gonna use it once a year if I do a lot of work with it. So it's really not worth the trouble for me to get a surface plate. And this plate works just fine. Well, a height gauge is not a CMM machine. It's not digital. They do make digital height gauges. I don't happen to have one because the company that I worked for had this manual gauge. And it's got a Vernier scale on it, which is really old school. Doesn't even have a digit. Doesn't even have a, a sweep dial on it. And they marked it as not calibrated. And they said it wasn't worth uh, calibrating. They said it's for reference only. So they were going to toss it out. And I said, well, if you're just going to put it in the garbage, I'll take it home. So that's what I did. The thing about this kind of height gauge, if you got a set of Joe blocks, you don't even need the verniers. You just clamp the indicator, you just clamp the bar onto it, loosen up the nuts. slide it down until it sits on the jewel block then you tighten up the nuts and it's good to go you can set it for any size you want now in my case I don't have jewel blocks probably would be nice to have a set of jewel blocks but I don't own a set but then again I don't need them the stuff I'm working on, I know what it is, and I can use this to do the things it does well, and do the other stuff with different means. Using my Vernier calipers, I can read that this block is 1.869 across. So I'm going to check my height gauge. I can take my height gauge. Go up against this known dimension, 1.869, and they read exactly the same. 1.869. So if I subtract 1.3 from 1.869, I come up with 0.569, divide that by 2, and I come up with 0.27, divide that by 2, and I come up with 0.2845, and since I want to have about 10 thousandths on each side of this nut, so I got room to slide it back and forth in the T-slot, I'm going to reduce that down to 0.275, so I subtract 0.275 from 1.869 I come up with 1.594. So my first line on here is going to be at 1.594. This is a nicely ground tool block. It is exactly one inch thick. And that's going to let me make up for the one inch that I lose from this arrangement on this height gauge. I know I want to have the sides up 0.3 from the bottom. So I take my height gauge and I set it at 0.3, lock it in place. 
Spread my line. And I have two nice little marks right across the, the sides of the thing, just where I want them. Bear with me, this is an improvisation. So now I have two lines going that way. That's where I have to cut off this bar. Then I'm going to have Actually, I'm just going to cut that bar off there. I don't need to have the other lines on it. Kind of ahead of myself. I wanted to lay out these two lines also so that I can cut the T-shape. And I wanted to do this while this was still full size and everything was squared up. I subtract the width of this top section of the T-nut from the width of my original block, which is 1.869. The width of that top section on the T-nut is 0.850. So 1.869 minus 0 0.850 is 1.019. I divide 1.019 by 2. And that's 0.532. So 1.869 minus 0.532 is where the first where this line is going to be on the block. Seven, three, three. I'm going to make my first line at 1.337. 1.869 minus 0.532 leaves 1.337. I wanted to give myself about 10 thousandths on each side, so that comes out to 1.3. I'm going to round it off at 1.33.
Now I have my marks made and I can go ahead and finish cutting the block. Notice I'm using two hands. Well, it's because my right arm's getting tired. I see a lot of guys actually using a hacksaw like this. That's a bad news idea. All that does is put too much pressure on the hacksaw blade, and you'll see the blade starting to bend about here because they're really pushing down on it, thinking it makes it cut faster. The blade itself. need a whole lot of down pressure. What it needs is to be going back and forth and engaging the material. pressure only overloads the teeth and causes them to dull more quickly. Had to move over a little bit, I was getting close to the casting. is going to be plenty warm because I put a whole lot of vibration in or I put a whole lot of friction into it. This piece which is a little heavier and also was engaged in the vise as a heat sink doesn't get as warm but I got warm so I'm going to stop for a while. <laughs> 